Well, hello, I'm Pam Archer, and I own The Colorful Cottage. You can follow me at uh, the facebook.com slash The Colorful Cottage. Today, I'm going to show you how to make homemade yeast rolls. These are the best yeast rolls that I've ever tasted, and I've used a lot of different recipes, including my own mother's, for many years, and then I found this recipe, and I absolutely love it. It's easy to do, it's simple, and it makes a lot. I think this recipe makes about 48, somewhere around there, 48 rolls. Uh, but today we're gonna to do something special. I'm gonna add on the back, on the end of the video, I'm gonna have how to make um, sweet rolls, or cinnamon rolls out of that as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I wash my hands, and I preheated my oven on 350, just for like five or 10 minutes, and then I turned it off. And that gives the stove top a little bit of warmth. So when I'm ready to let the yeast rise, it rises uh, pretty quick that way. Now, what we need, always assemble your ingredients first. And I'm gonna be using bread flour, and I've already got it measured out. You need about probably nine to 10 cups of bread flour. I like to use Pillsbury, that's what I found to work the best, but any bread flour would be fine. And you use that because it's a lighter texture than either of the other flours like, like wheat or, or uh, self-rising or plain flour. Then we'll be needing sugar. You'll need three quarters of a cup of sugar plus one tablespoon. Then you'll need three packages, or I think it's about three tablespoons if you're buying yeast, dry yeast in a uh, bowl. I mean, no, excuse me, not a bowl, you know, the little jar. But I usually buy the packets because this is the exact amount of yeast that I need. And uh, this is not the fast acting. You do not want to use the fast acting on this recipe. This is the active dry yeast. So we need that. You're gonna need one tablespoon of salt, just plain table salt one egg, you're gonna need one stick of butter, I like to use Land O'Lakes, and it, I use salted, so salted butter. You're gonna need a cup and a half of whole milk. Now, skim milk and uh, low-fat milk, 1%, you need the fat in the, in the milk to make these rolls good, so whole milk. Um, and then we're going to put, uh, I think that's all we, all the ingredients we have. So we're going to get started. I've already washed my hands. So the first thing we have to do is let our yeast uh, get bubbly. So I'm going to put one tablespoon of sugar in the bowl. And when you're making anything that has yeast in it, any kind of breads like that, only use metal or glass. You can, or you can use wooden wooden spoons or wooden bowls, but never use plastic or, or anything like that. Only glass, um, stainless steel, that sort of thing, because it the yeast just won't rise in it in anything else. I've tried to make it uh, in plastic bowls and it's not gonna work. So I need to add two cups of lukewarm water. Now this is an important step too. You don't want your water too hot. You don't want it too cold just tepid. So I'll go over here and I'll have to, to play around a little bit till my water gets, I'll turn it to hot and let it get hot and then I'll turn it back. And the only way I can describe lukewarm if you're not sure, it's um, warmer than room temperature. I you drink water at room temperature, it's warmer than that, but it's not in any way hot. So now it's starting to get warm and I don't want to get hot on me, so I'm gonna cut it back. And I usually test it like you would a baby's bottle if you ever tested a baby's bottle. It's a little warmer. This is something you will have to play around with to get it right. Okay, that's about right, I think. Just before it gets hot, that's what you want. You're gonna get two cups. Right at two cups. Even with your uh, measuring your water and your liquids, use glass. Don't use the um, fiberglass ones. Now I'm just going to take the end of my spoon and stir that up just a little bit. Let that, it won't dissolve fully, the sugar won't. I need to mix it up just a little bit. Then I'm going to cut my packets apart. 
And on these three, there's a line that shows you where to cut. And for me, I'm, I'm a messy cook, so I cut them apart and shake the yeast down in the pack because you want every bit of it. And I'm not cutting that in the floor. I actually have a trash can down here. So I'm going to sprinkle that over the top of the water. I'm making dinner tonight for a family uh, that they lost their son last week, their 41-year-old son. And in the South, when you hear of someone who passes away or, or you know, has some kind of tragedy, you take food. So I'll be cooking the meal to take for them tonight. And uh, homemade rolls are my specialty, so I always include those in any meals that I take to people. So got that done and we're just gonna set this aside and you'll see it in just a little bit when it starts to get bubbly, but we need to give that time to, to work. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, cut up one stick of butter into my, and that's the one thing I forgot, it's my knife. Let's take, when, I, when I'm watching a live video and the uh, person doesn't have their stuff together and I'm sitting there, but why didn't you have that out already? And here I did it. So a little gray, so I'm going to be better about that. So I'm just going to cut it up in fairly small pieces. Not too big. Better. These are called buttery dinner rolls, and, and they really, <laughs> they're, they're not low fat, but they're wonderful. And next I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar. This is probably about 50 years old or so. It's a cut, old cup measure. But I like when I'm measuring things, I use a set of cups that, so they all measure about the same. So this is a quarter cup. I don't have a three quarter cup measure. And I've gotten so used to using doing it this way. I'll just use my little polka dot cup. Okay, now we'll get that out of the way. All right, now here's where we pour in our milk. We're going to put in one and a half cups of milk. Very easy. Now, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a stir, not much, but just enough to get the sugar off the bottom of the bowl. And as you notice, I have a glass bowl. And you need a large bowl. This recipe makes a lot. You won't believe it when the dough rises and you see how much is here. So you need a large bowl. I got this years ago, but I ordered some for my daughter off of Amazon. And uh, they come in a set or you can buy them individually. And I think this is the 11 inch, but 11 inch or larger. Now I'm gonna put this in the microwave <coughs> for two minutes and 20 seconds. And I think this is a 700 watt microwave. So if yours is more than that, you want to want to put it in that long. You just want it scald the milk, which means you don't want it to bring come to a boil or burn it or anything like that. So while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and put one egg in a cup here, and I'm just going to beat it by hand. Now you can use the mixer to do these rolls. I prefer to do it by hand because I've been doing it for 50 some years and that's the way my mother did it. And I have made it with a dough hook on my KitchenAid mixer, but I do like this method better. I'll just get a, give it a good mix there. You also want to make sure that, that your room temperature is pretty warm. You know, these aren't going to rise in a cold room, so. Uh, you know, I try to keep it warm, and my kitchen's fairly small, so when I crank up the oven, it heats it up a little bit, too. Now I'm going to get my um, things here ready that I'm going to need to put in there. Got about another minute on that to get that warm. The yeast is starting to work a little bit, not quite enough. I'm going to do a spoon. You never, ever, ever stir this 
but sometimes you have to help it get in, in the water a little bit. But about another five minutes or so, it'll, it will be bubbly. And then we can mix it in. But so far, what have we done? Really easy. Uh, one tablespoon of sugar in a bowl, a glass bowl or Pyrex, something like that. Uh, one tablespoon of sugar, two cups of lukewarm water, just tap water's fine. And then we added three packets of Fleischmann's Active Dry Yeast. And we're just letting that work a little bit. Then I took one stick of butter, three quarter cups of sugar, and one and a half cups of whole milk. To, uh, and we've got that in the microwave right now. And it's ready. And that warm milk is gonna also help with the rolls rising. But it's a little too warm right now to add the yeast. See, we have to do some, a couple things to take it down a little bit, take the temperature down just a little bit. And you can see there's gonna be still chunks of butter in there, but those will go away as I mix it, okay? So at this point, we're gonna add one tablespoon of salt. And that is a tablespoon because this is a large recipe. I've never tried to make half of this roll recipe. Um, I usually just make the whole one and just freeze the rolls uh, or bake, uh, bake them first, almost done, and then freeze them. Or divide them up. Serve them right away. That's our best, our favorite way. I'm going to go ahead and add the egg. Give that a little mix. Now, I'm going to start adding the, the, the uh, flour, but I'm going to add only one cup, or approximately one cup. Just dip it out of your flour there. And that helps to bring the temperature down enough so I can add the yeast. That yeast isn't quite as bubbly as I'd like to have it yet. It's getting there, but not quite. What you'll find, this is, I'm starting a new YouTube channel, so this will be my first video on the YouTube channel. I have others on my channel, Pam Archer, uh, on YouTube, but I wanted to start a YouTube channel with some of the things I do with the Colorful Cottage. Mostly I show furniture painting and, and that kind of thing, but I also do garden things, uh, arranging flowers, various things like that. And, um... I, I like to cook, uh, things like I like to bake, I should say. I like to bake, so I like to do lots of kinds of breads and cakes and stuff like that. So I thought I would start sharing it. Now you can see here, it's starting to bubble a little. I'm still not real happy with how that is, and I don't know what the deal is, but it's not. I want that yeast to be a little bit wetter. So I'm just at the back of my spoon getting it wet. You know, that's the thing about cooking. We can have recipes and that's good, but it is not an exact science because there's so many variables. Just push that off in there. So some days everything works just great and other days it takes a little bit longer and it has to do with room temperature. Humidity is a big deal. Uh, it's very humid here. I'm in Tennessee, in Kingsport, Tennessee. So it's really humid right now and hot, so and it looks like it's about to storm. So all those can uh, have an effect on anything that you're cooking, but especially with breads and cakes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add that now. Just pour water and everything in, so that gives us more liquid, because we're gonna be putting a lot of flour in here. Just stir that up enough to get it in, start to mix in. There's nothing that smells as good as yeast rolls baking. It already smells good because I smell the yeast. Now, the fun part. I'm gonna start putting in one, to two, one to two cups of flour. Most of the time I use almost all this, at least nine cups of flour in this. It usually takes it. But you don't dump it all in at once or you'll have one big, looks like a snowstorm mess. So you want to do it just gradually, a little bit at a time. This 
with yeast bread, how it differs from, say, biscuits or anything made with just regular flour and no yeast, is that yeast bread likes to be worked with, where, in other words, you need yeast bread and um, it likes to be what we call aerated. So you have a little more time to work with them than you do when you're making biscuits. You're making biscuits, they don't like to be worked with and the more you work with them, the tougher they'll be. And I'll do some biscuits for you one day. But these are rolls. It doesn't have to be completely mixed in at this point. Just want to start getting the flour in there a little at a time. This is super simple. And the thing is, it feeds a crowd. I made them last night for my daughter's birthday, and I sent, I had three bags of them left over, and we ate a lot of them. And uh, I sent them home with the two, two of the daughters and the friend. And I got texts today saying they had rolls for breakfast, and they loved them. But today, I'm going to make half the recipe in the rolls, as I said, and the other half... I'm going to do in cinnamon rolls, or half the dough in cinnamon rolls. All right, now this is the point. You could have used your dough hook, and if you want to do that, that is perfectly fine and it works, but that's not what I do. I use my hand because, first of all, the best food is the food that's made with love. And you get a better feel for the yeast, uh, the way the bread's working. And um, so you just mix it up in there. And just keep going around and around so you get the flour from down on, on the bottom. And all the mixture from down on the bottom. And you, it also helps you see how sticky the dough is. Because there's a consistency that you want. So that when you do roll, roll the bread out, that it's not so sticky that it takes lots and lots more flour. It's better to add the flour at this point than when you're getting it ready to roll it out because that will make the rolls heavy and dry. So I feel like it needs about this much more. Just fold that over. Normally I use both hands but to work it, but it makes quite a mess on hands, so I think that's just about where I want it. It off the bottom there so it's quite okay that I've worked and worked the dough and it's quite okay that I've still got a little flour on the edges no problem with that so every single bit of it that flour does not have to be completely worked in get most of it off my hands my sparkling clean and sanitized hands. I might add. But when you watch your mother do this hundreds of times, you know, you you tend to do what your mother did and what her mother did and what her mother before her did. And in the South, we love bread, as you can tell. <laughs> That's as you can tell when I turn around, I've got my own rolls on my body. So I try not to make these too often. So I wash my hands. Get that dough off. And be sure that you have a strainer or something in your sink to catch those little bits of dough uh, so you can pull them out to the trash. Or if you have a garbage disposal, you do it in that side. Okay. Now, all I'm going to do is cover these with parchment paper. And I do that because the parchment paper makes a nice cover. I'm gonna get with this. But when I get ready to roll them out, it does, when they rise, it doesn't stick, the dough doesn't stick to it. So now I'm just gonna set it right over here on my stove where it's nice and warm. And I'm going to set the timer because it takes about an hour and 15 to minutes to 
an hour and a half or so for that dough to rise. And it will more than double in bulk or about double in bulk. So uh, in about an hour and a half, we'll be back to roll out the roll. For now, I'm gonna pause it so you won't see any glitch. But I'll be back. And if for some reason <laughs> that doesn't work, I'll have a step one and a step two and probably a step three. So I'll see you in a few. All right, we're back. First rising of the rolls, and look how they rose up out of that bowl like that. You save that parchment paper right there. And I'm gonna put some red flour on my surface, on my dough board. And it's okay if you don't have a dough board, you can roll them out on a surface. Um, it's no problem at all. And I'm actually gonna put some around here, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, I forgot to take my gloves off. I've been washing dishes. <laughs> you can see my kitchen. I cook all over my kitchen when I cook, so it's quite a mess right now. All right, I'm going to dump this out on the dough board. Keep my hands. Actually, I'm, I'm going to get a spoon and get the rest of that out. Perfect consistency. You don't want to miss any of the dough, that's for sure. Okay, let's see. I've been busy cooking the meal I told you about and running around in circles, so I was going to make some pork chops and a mushroom milk gravy, bake those, and my pork chops were frozen solid. So I had to send my husband down, husband slash cameraman, to the store to buy some more pork chops. So, got a little bit frantic here. Okay, set that aside. Now I'm just, on this right here, I'm just gonna spread a little bit of the, you don't wanna get too much flour on it and you don't wanna work this too much. So it's a, you can see there's a lot of dough here. And oh, it's gonna make some good stuff. Okay, now I'm just going to knead this just five or six times, not much. And then I'm going to divide it. And I've decided to divide. Oh, oh, <laughs> I just had an accident. Pause it, Jack, and I'll come back. Sorry about that. <laughs> I went and fixed my finger and then I put a fresh glove on. So we'll finish this. What I was going to say is I'm going to cut just a little bit more than half, I think, for the cinnamon rolls. And uh, then, I'm, then I'm going to cut them in, actually I'm going to lay that right there. I'm going to cut this in half and let it sit for a minute. Now. Since they already set for a minute, while well, I took a little break, I'm going to go ahead and roll them out. So once again, we don't want to get too much flour on the board or on your surface. And I do want to put just a little bit on my rolling pin. This rolling pin is also about 52 years old. Now I use a cutter like this that's open-ended sharp on that side and I got it in a set on Amazon a few years ago and there's different sizes so you can see see this one I think is probably about two inches and that's the one I use most of the time but it comes in a little package like that okay I don't have an Amazon affiliate link yet but if you'll go up there and hit uh, notifications or sub or uh, subscribe, that would be great. Because when I get to 5,000 followers, then I can get a, an Amazon affiliate link and uh, direct you to um, some good places to buy things. Now, I'm gonna melt some butter over here. I'm meant to be doing that. A stick and a half. Only I would melt one stick, and I use salted butter on this too. But since I'm going to be doing cinnamon rolls, I'll need a little extra butter. So 
and slice this up. Let that melt. The other things I've been working on were the, like I told you, I'm doing the pork chops, baked pork chops in a mushroom and milk gravy. And I bake them in the oven maybe an hour and a half at 350. And I'm going to do corn on the cob and stewed apples and cabbage casserole and these rolls here. Did you see me? I made a little mitt like. My mother taught me how to do that. And I'm going to grease my pans pretty fairly generously. And grease for the cinnamon rolls because I will send one pan of these to the family I'm cooking for. And then my husband will be upset if I didn't keep any for him, so I'll just do a little pan to a couple of rolls here. Get out of the way. Waiting on that butter to melt. Then I'm going to go ahead and mix up, for the cinnamon rolls, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some brown sugar. And I don't really measure, but I, I would I would guess that's probably about a cup, about a cup, maybe just a little bit more of brown sugar. And I like the light, but you can use whichever one you want, the light or the dark. And I like to use the um, cashew cinnamon, and I put a lot. I don't know, a good tablespoon and a half or so. Let's mix all that together. I go by how I feel when I cook. Am I better ready? All right. So I've got that all ready. Set it aside. Rinse the cinnamon off my hands. Bring the butter over here. So you wonder what you're going to do with that. Well, let's see. This is why they're called extra buttery rolls. So, get me a little extra flour here to keep the flour on that. Start to cut them out. I love to cook for other people. I don't necessarily love to cook, I love to bake. So right here, I just folded it in half and pressed it down a little bit. So dipping it in the melted butter. And you want, when you're baking yeast bread, you do want the bread to touch. You want the rolls to touch each other because they help, they rise better that way. These are gonna be big and they're light don't feel heavy at all, so the texture's great. The reason, I didn't explain to you the reason after I poured the dough out and kneaded it just a little bit, the reason that I let it, let it sit, oh, usually about 10 to 15 minutes, that's when the gluten forms. And that's what helps the, the rolls to get big and puffy too. So that I do let them sit and rest just a minute after I've kneaded them the first time. Now, I'm just going to roll them out. And when I finish with this pan, I will just cover it with parchment paper again and let them rise in a warm place. These rose for about an hour and 15 minutes or a little less because uh, it's really warm today and I had the oven. I'm warm. I had them rising on top of the oven, top of the stove. Mm. 
Oops, almost forgot. Even on the pan, you can see they're starting to rise just a little bit, but it'll take, an, take a good hour and a half or so for them to rise as much as I want them to. So I've got the pork chops in the oven, and I've got most of the cabbage casserole made. haven't made all of it yet. I'll finish putting it together. And then I'll do the corn and the stewed apples. It's one of my favorite things. It's a stewed apples are a great complement to pork dishes of any kind. Sort of a sweet, sweet along with the pork. Okay, next bit. Um, can you imagine how hard it would have been to roll that whole big bunch out at one time? I don't think I had a surface big enough for that. I used to sit at my mother's side growing up and watch her make rolls. I had uh, five brothers and sisters, and I was number five of the lot. And apparently I was the most inquisitive because I was always asking questions and always wanted to learn and know and do. And Mother was really good to teach me all I needed to know. Can you see my kitchen? Show them the kitchen, Chuck. Show them the kitchen. What a mess it is right now. But we'll get it done. Probably won't be able to talk him into cleaning it up for me. So I'll have to do that. I need a little, I need some minions. That's what I need. Okay. We're coming along. There's the first dozen. I said this usually makes about, you know, from 42 to 48 rolls two pans so I'm just going to get one good pan and I might have to take some more of that dough there to get them and it is pouring rain and storming here where we are in Upper East Tennessee um, I live in Kingsport which is on the border of Virginia North Carolina so in fact one place I used to work when I was teaching fitness was in Bristol and I would go in the parking lot where I worked in Tennessee and come out of Virginia. So really close there up in the uh, corner of Tennessee, about an hour and a half from the Great Smoky Mountains. So if you ever get up this way, it's really beautiful territory. I do live in the mountains, so we do get a lot of interference.